In this video, we're going to talk about acetals and hemiacetals and the mechanisms behind how we form them. Now, there are a couple of things we need to address. First of all, namely, what is a hemiacetal and what is an acetal? So, a hemiacetal refers to a carbon that has two oxygen bonds on it. One oxygen will be an OH. The other oxygen will be an oxygen that has other carbons on it. So, I'm going to write OR. R can be a CH3, it could be a whole carbon chain. As long as it's O carbon here, this is a hemiacetal. And an acetal, a full acetal, is a carbon that has two oxygen bonds, and both of those oxygens are OR groups. So OCH3, OCH3, for example. Now, acetals can only be formed from two starting materials, either a ketone or an aldehyde, namely a double bond O that has nothing but carbons or hydrogens on it. Other carbonyls that you'll see, things that are derivative of carboxylic acid, for example, so carboxylic acid itself, where you have double bond O with an OH, or double bond O with an OCH3, or even something weird like double bond O with Cl on it. These double bond O's cannot form a hemiacetal or an acetal. The only ones that work are the double bond O's that only have carbons or hydrogens sticking off of them. So if you were ever to see one of these guys reacting with H plus HOR, you're gonna have something different happening. And if you wanna know what that is, go ahead and watch the carboxylic acid derivatives video. But I digress, this is acetals we're talking about. And acetals can only form with ketones and aldehydes. There's one other condition that you need to form your acetal and your hemiacetal in, and that is in acidic conditions. You cannot form a hemiacetal or an acetal in base conditions. And let's talk about why. When we talk about carbonyl chemistry, we see that the carbon of that double bond O is very electropositive. We know that double bond O can always resonate up into that oxygen, giving us a resonance structure of carbon positive O minus. So it makes sense that things would like to attack this carbon with their electrons. But if we try to do that with base conditions, let's see what happens. Let's say I take this ketone that I started with, and over my arrow, I'm going to put an OH minus, or sorry, not OH minus, OCH3 minus. When an OCH3 minus comes in and attacks that double bond O, this is going to swing up. That's nothing new. And what you'll get is this intermediate where you have O minus and OCH3 on the same carbon. Now the problem here is O minus really, really, really likes to form a double bond O. It turns out that double bond O's are super stable, so they really like to form. And they will always try to form so long as the conditions are ideal. So this oxygen minus will look to swing down. And it will, do, and it will be able to do that so long as on that same carbon there is a good leaving group. And here we have an oxygen. What ends up happening is this oxygen will immediately get kicked out as soon as it attaches, and the net result is no reaction, no change to our starting material. So what you need to know is that hemiacetals and acetals can never form in base conditions, meaning if you see something negative over the arrow, you can't form an acetal or a hemiacetal with it. You need acidic conditions, you need H+. So let's look at how this mechanism works if we have H plus this time. So over my arrow, I'm gonna have H plus, and then I'm gonna have HOCH3, so no negative charge this time. So the way the mechanism starts out is your double bond O is gonna go out and grab the proton and become protonated. And so you'll have double bond OH positive. And right now we're gonna see our first mechanistic step that just keeps repeating itself in the exam two material. We have a double bond OH positive, or we have a double bond something positive. And what that means is that this double bond is going to want to swing its electrons up to the oxygen to make it neutral. At the same time as this happens, well, if it was just this, we'd get a carbocation. It turns out in these mechanisms, we try to avoid showing carbocations. So another rule that I wrote out here, I said you should never see negative charges, and that's because we're always in acidic conditions, things that are positive conditions. We should never see a negative charge. Another thing you should never see is, while we should see positives, we should never see a carbon positive. All our positives will be on oxygen. So what that means is we need a reason for this to not become positive. 
And what happens is, to fill in that carbon that would have otherwise become positive, the HOCH3, or your, your HOR group, is gonna come in and fill that space. So the oxygen comes in and attacks that carbon. So our next intermediate, we will not see a carbon cation, but rather an oxygen cation. This oxygen uses up its electrons to make this bond. And so what we get is, this resonates up, so it becomes single bond OH, and this new oxygen attached, so we have oxygen, CH3, and the hydrogen that it had. It comes in with all of the things that oxygen was attached to. So it's got the hydrogen and the methyl, and as a result, it is positive. But we want to see that oxygen be neutralized. So some base is gonna come in and pull off that proton, or I shouldn't really say base, but most likely another molecule of one of these. So what will happen is, this HOCH3, another molecule of it, we always assume there is more than one molecule. This oxygen will come in, grab that proton, and neutralize this oxygen. Now, you can skip this arrow. The arrow they really want to see is the fact that you know that this hydrogen gets pulled off. It gets pulled off. So if you draw this one arrow from the hydrogen bond to the oxygen, that's full credit. You don't necessarily need to show what's pulling off the hydrogen. Just know the fact that it does get pulled off by something. And as a result, we're at our halfway point. We have formed our hemiacetal. How do I know that? Because now what I have on the same carbon is one OH and one OR group, one OCH3 in this case. So here is my hemiacetal. But we want to go all the way to the acetal. We want to go and see how do we get the second OR group on. Well, to do that, the next step is going to be a protonation step. We know that we want two ORs. We want two OCH3s in this case. And that means that this OH has no purpose being here. We need to get rid of it. Whenever you see in a mechanism that your goal is to make something leave from a carbon, typically what you're gonna do is protonate it. Because once it gets protonated, it becomes positive and wants to get kicked out, take its bond electrons and leave. So what you're gonna do is over this arrow, one more time you're gonna have some H plus come in. And that OH, will grab that proton and become H2O positive. So OHH positive with our OCH3 over here. Now this next step in the mechanism is the weird one. And to explain it, we're gonna go back a little bit. Uh, in this very first, in the, one of the first steps we did, we had a double bond O positive get attacked by the HOCH3 group. And it turns out that we need this scenario again to add the other OR group to get to our full acetal. But we don't have a double bond O here yet. What you're going to see is like what I showed you with the base mechanism and why it didn't work, because the, the OCH3 that you add gets kicked out by a double bond forming, we have a similar scenario here. Namely, if we want this H2O positive to leave, and we don't want to ever see a carbocation forming, Something needs to come in on this bond and prevent that carbon from becoming positive. And your first thought might be, oh, well, why not just use the other OCH3? Have that come in and kick this out. But that's not exactly how it works. What happens first is the OR group that we've already added will resonate down, swing its electrons down, and force that H2O positive out. And while this looks kind of weird, this is the mechanistic step that happens in pretty much every mechanism you're gonna do for the second exam. You have a good leaving group, and on that same carbon you have an oxygen. Whether it's negative or neutral doesn't matter. That neutral or negative oxygen swings down to form a double bond and kick your leaving group out. And now what you get as a result of that is double bond OCH3 positive. And now we're almost done, because now we have the situation we want. We have a double bond O positive that we know the other HOCH3 can come in and attack. And so our last step well, our second to last step, rather, is the HOCH3, another molecule of HOCH3, will come, on, come in with its electrons, attack this carbon, and swing that double bond up. And now what we'll have is a carbon with two OR groups on it. The OCH3 we had initially, and now another OCH3 that is positive because it still has its hydrogen attached. So our very last step is just to pull off that proton. And again, what pulls off that proton, they don't particularly care about. We could argue it's another molecule of HOCH3, like here. But the point being is the arrow they need to see is from the bond of the hydrogen going to the oxygen that's positive, and that will finally give you your full acetal. 
And so what you'll have is OCH3 here and OCH3 here, your final acetal product. Now, how do we know when we're going to stop? We could have stopped at the hemiacetal, we could have stopped at the acetal. Is there a way to say, okay, do we finish at one point or another? Very often, if they care about the mechanism of the acetal or hemiacetal formation, they usually only give you half of it. They'll show you this is the starting reactant, this is the final product, and you have to draw about half the mechanism. Because if we have you draw out this whole thing, that's going to take a while on an exam, and we don't usually make you do that. That said, this entire mechanism going forward is either something great for your card or something great to commit to memory because it's a mechanism that a lot of the fundamental points repeat throughout this exam material. Namely, having a double bond OH positive or a double bond something positive swinging up to neutralize that positive end but being attacked at the same, end, at the same time at the end that isn't positive. And likewise, with this step right here, where you have a good leaving group and something with electrons on the same bond. That thing that isn't positive, that isn't your leaving group, will resonate down, push its lone pairs down, and form a double bond, kicking that leaving group out. These two steps are super important to get used to seeing because pretty much every mechanism, again, on this coming exam, will involve one of these two steps, if not both. Okay? So that is the general forward mechanism of the hemiacetal and acetal formation. Now you are also responsible of going backwards, taking the acetal and mechanistically going back to the double bond O. But now here's another handy thing to know about this exam's material. It's very mechanism heavy, but it turns out that going forward and going backwards with your mechanisms, a lot of the stuff, not a lot, the entire set of intermediates that we drew out for this process will actually end up being the same. And let me show you how that works out. So what's over the arrow and the arrows getting to your product will be different, but every single intermediate I've drawn here will end up being the same. And let's show why. So our goal is to take the acetal and bring it all the way back to this double bond O. So we're going to start from here and go forward. So going forward in my first step, I need to turn one of these OCH3s into HOCH3 positive. What will go over the arrow is H plus then, because all I need is a proton. So the OCH3 will grab a proton and become HOCH3 positive. Now our goal is, since we're trying to go backwards, we're trying to kick out OCH3 groups. If I want to kick out this OCH3 group, well, I know that this bond has to go to that oxygen that's positive. But like we saw before, we never just have a leaving group leave. What we do is we form a double bond to kick that leaving group out. So the other HOCH3 will use its lone pairs to come down and form a double bond, giving us this intermediate. Now our goal is to get one of our OHs back, because we want to get to that hemiacetal halfway point first. And so what we do is we bring in some water. So we have H2O over the arrow, and that H2O comes in and attacks the base of the double bond O, so this double bond can go up to the oxygen and neutralize it. And now we'll have H2O positive and a neutral OCH3 on the same carbon. Since we want to keep our, H2, our OH group there and we want to get rid of the OCH3, we should deprotonate this oxygen. So this hydrogen will get pulled off and the electrons will go to the oxygen. And that will give us this intermediate here. And once again, it doesn't really matter who you show pulling off that proton. This is the arrow we care about. We care about, lights turn back on please. <laughs> We care about showing that this oxygen becomes neutral because the bond breaks and puts its electrons there. Now, what happens after that? We have OH neutral. We're at our hemiacetal. Once again, we're at the point where we know we want to remove an OCH3 group. So what we're going to do is, once again, protonate the other OCH3 group. Have that OCH3 grab a proton and become HOCH3 positive. Now we're almost done, because once again we're at the point where we have a leaving group, we have the group we want to kick out, and on that same carbon we have an oxygen that isn't positive. That oxygen will use its lone pairs to swing down and form a double bond, forcing that leaving group out, giving us double bond OH positive, and then we have one final step. Deprotonate this hydrogen, put the electrons on the oxygen, and we're back at the carbonyl. So these mechanisms are very involved. There's a lot of steps and a lot of knowledge that you have to have behind them. But again, the thing that I want to stress the most in terms of this mechanism are two points. 
the point where you have a double bond O positive, and then something comes in, attacks the carbon of that double bond O positive, forcing those electrons up to neutralize the oxygen. And the step where on the same carbon you have a good leaving group and an oxygen that is neutral or negative. The oxygen will resonate down and kick that leaving group out. These two steps repeat over and over and over again. And with that, that's the basic idea behind the mechanism of acetals.